Hello guys, how's it going? Alex Grandpio and Ian. I hope you're well. Today we've got another episode on the Celica. So today we're going to be talking about the front brakes. So we're going to cover today is obviously hopefully we don't need to cover the fact why you need your brakes. So that should be all good by now. Uh, we're going to talk about how to replace your front brake pads, how to replace your discs. Obviously the whole braking system, we're going to talk about caliper, we're going to talk about common issues you might have, the squeaking, the binding, uh, the grinding. Uh, the overheating of the brakes or the wheel as well, obviously, which will be caused by that as well. We're going to talk about all the common problems, what areas you need to look for, and obviously how to do your job properly and as safe as possible as well. We're going to give you all the spec if the days are better serviceable, and I'll also be going to give you all the talk specs as well for the job and show you all the tools you're going to need. So if that is something you're interested in, then don't forget to give it a subscribe, please. Give us a like, guys, and also comment below to let me know if you find the video helpful if you got any more questions, and obviously, if you need any more information or anything else, I'd be more than happy to help. Right, so the first thing is to make sure that your car is secure. Obviously, I know not everyone got a car lift. If you're working on the floor, please make sure you're using the correct jacking points. You can check that in your owner's manual, but you'll see under there, there's a strong points there where the seal is, and you can jack it up there using this and jack, and also jack stands, please, for extra security. I would definitely recommend leaving it on the jack stands and make sure the handbrake is on when you're working on the front brakes so the car doesn't roll back or forward obviously as well you can get some kids that might have a pad as well that can stop the car rolling so once you've got that you're going to need obviously the locking wall nut most of Toyota's got them 19mm socket and obviously in my case I'm using the gun which is brilliant makes the job so much easier as well I've been testing this gun for a while from Draper Tools highly recommend it guys you might have seen my giveaway on this as well before so let's just get the wheels off quickly Right, so I just want to make it nice and simple. Obviously, you've got the brake disc here. As you can see, this is a good condition disc, actually. The brake pads are in there. You've got one on each side. This is just making it as basic as possible. You've got the carrier, which is this bit here, where the brake pad is going to be located. And you've got the caliper, which is this bit in the middle, which you've got the cylinder that when you press the brakes, thanks to all these hoses that got brake fluid in them, uh, coming out from your master cylinder, uh, they create enough pressure to push the brakes squeeze them against the disc and make obviously your car stop obviously there's a lot more information about that i'm just giving you just the basic information on this in case you've never seen brakes before and just want to know how it all works so what we're going to do today is going to show you quickly the tools that you can use uh, to check your brakes so we've got the brake pad measuring tool just to make sure that your brake pads are in correct spec so what you do you don't need to take anything off you can do it actually through the wheel as well if you've got enough space so obviously at Toyota, you would, or any, obviously, other different brand, uh, once your brake pads reach three millimeters, I would definitely advise re replacing them. So it's nice and easy. With this one, let's just check the brake pads we've got in here. So I'm just going to get the eight millimeters in there. As you can see, it fits there perfectly, no gap. So that I would say that pad is definitely on eight millimeters. So obviously, you don't measure the metal bit, which is that bit. You only measure the material of the brake pad that you got in there. So I would say that is nice, clear eight millimeters on there. Now you also got a little gap here that you can get it in there and measure the inside pad. But obviously this, you can only do it once the wheels are off. You ain't gonna be able to do it with the wheel on. And don't forget today, I'm doing this video not because I need to replace the brakes. I'm just doing it to show you how to do the job and to show you all the specs. So the next tool you can use is micrometer. Obviously this is a digital one. You can use this to measure your disc. Obviously, it depends if you got a big lip on it or not. My one's quite even because they're quite recent. But to measure it, obviously, you turn it on, zero it first. Once it's all the way shut, zero it. So that's all good. You can choose from millimeters to inches. So I'm going to open it up and measure the disc just around it. Close it up. Look at the number. Make sure it's nice and even. So let's just look at the number. And it's 25.1 which is brilliant. Obviously it moved a little bit now, but yeah, that is plenty of disc uh, that you got there. It's definitely in spec. I'm gonna put the spec in description below so you can see the serviceable disc, the minimal thickness you should have. Obviously if you got a lip, you can always use a grinder and cut out a little bit here so it goes over the lip. 
But yeah, this is definitely a good measurement there. Right, there's also the only tool that I'm missing today is the tool to measure if your disc is warped or obviously out of shape. I haven't got that tool unfortunately, but yeah, for more professional use you can get that as well. And then you turn the disc uh, while it's reading the data in three different places and you'll see if it's out of uh, shape or not. But unfortunately I haven't got that tool today. Right, so looking at this side, what we got is obviously two bolts holding the caliper on there. You got your brake hose that goes in there into the caliper. This is the caliper like I mentioned earlier. You got sliders, which is the bits that got rubber over them, and you got bleeding nipples. So this is the nipple that you use to bleed the brakes if you got any air in there, or if you're replacing the brake fluid. So looking at this already, I can see an issue already here. Uh, the seal is split, unfortunately. So that is a problem that will uh, cause the water and rubbish getting in there and seizing up this slider, which is going to be interesting to see if it's already seized up or not. Obviously, I haven't used the car recently, and I can also see that this bolt there is different from that one. That's, a, that's the original one, and this is definitely an aftermarket one, so that it shouldn't be there. Someone obviously done something here before. Uh, so we're gonna get into that now. We're gonna take the caliper off now, and I'm gonna show you a little trick that you can use uh, to make it easier removing the caliper. So this is something important for you. You might have seen on my service videos as well on this car in previous episodes. So you've got the brake fluid bottle here, and before you start working on the brakes, you're gonna be pushing, obviously, the calipers back in, and the brake fluid will be retracting as you push it in, and it will be going into this bottle. So you need to make sure you've got enough empty space in here for it to retract, because you don't want it coming out of the bottle, and obviously going all over your bodywork and damaging your paint. If it does happen, if it's too late, don't forget to wash it off with water straight away, because it will damage your paint. So I've got enough space in there, and I'm not gonna be pushing the piston too much back because they, the pads got plenty of life left on them so it's only going to go a little bit I know I definitely got enough space to do one side obviously if not you will have to get a bit of brake fluid out of there so this is a little trick that I was talking to you about if you get a flat blade screwdriver and get it in there in that gap in the middle of the disc uh, you'll be able to push the caliper that way Make sure it's a nice strong screwdriver, just push it and you'll see that it will move a little bit that way uh, the sliders will go in a little bit more. And what that does, it just pushes the cylinder in a little bit so once you're undone the bolts, it's gonna be easier to remove the caliper off of there. So that's what we're gonna do now, just undo the caliper. Right, so here's another perfect opportunity to use my new tool kit from Draper Tools. Brilliant tools, very good quality as well. We're gonna need three eight ratchet here today I need a couple of sockets and also a special tool, the Allen key tool for that bottom bolt that is not the genuine one, so we'll get that off with that. Uh, like I said, the quality is amazing of these tools. I've been using them for a while now. I'm loving it. And like I said, I'm gonna put this in the description below as well. So to get the caliper off, we're gonna need the 40 mil, which is what the original bolt should be on there. So 40 mil on there. You got the nut there that you can use the either spanner on because that might turn depending on how seized it is it might turn and you might need to hold it or if you haven't got a spanner you can always use a screwdriver and jam it in there and obviously it'll stop it turning when you're undoing it so obviously got a spanner here so i'm going to put the spanner on there and crack that off there you go there you go it's not even that tight and the seal yeah the seal was knackered um, so I might need to buy a repair kit for this. Uh, so there you go, I'm gonna hold it. Push that off. Let's get the top one off as well. While we're here, quick tip for you. I'm gonna put this back on quickly, just to let you know, if you're only working on your brake pads, if you know that's all you're gonna do, you can leave the top one always in and just move the caliper up. As you can see, that's the piston that we're pressed in. You can press it in uh, a bit more if you're replacing the pads. Uh, so this will just keep it up there and you can obviously work on your pads this way. As you can see, they're nice and free. That's good, good start. Uh, but this is just a little tip for you because I know some people might mention this. So obviously we're gonna be taking the carrier off and showing you how to do discs. I'm gonna take the whole thing off and use a little bungee to secure the caliper. So as you can see, it'll come off now, nice and easy. Uh, the reason I'm using bungees, if I just leave the caliper hanging, there's a lot of stress on your holes there. You're going to start stretching it and the same at the bottom there. So make sure you take the weight off of it to avoid any problems. So I'm going to use bungee around the spring there and move it out of the way. So it's nice and safe there. 
Right, so looking at the pads, I can see that the inner one got a bit more. When I measured it, it did feel like it had a bit more gap there. So this one might be on 10, this one's on 8. And this might have been a previous issue before that either the caliper or the sliders were seizing up. Looking at this one, it is tight in there, which I'm surprised didn't cause the wear uneven like that and not this way. Uh, so yeah, you can see that the seal is split. So that's not good, the other half of the seal is here. You can buy a repair kit for this. It's only about 12, 15 pound on eBay or Amazon. I'm gonna put that in link in the description below. Uh, so as you can see, that will need replacing. This is actually not corroded. Usually you'll get a lot of corrosion on here. It will be completely seized in there. So I can still just get the rubbers and repair that, which is what I have to do later on. The top one, that's good. That's more than free. And it hasn't got any corrosion or any cuts. But I'll have a look anyway. Actually saying that, there is a little cut there. Not a major one. But yeah, if I get the kit, it will come with two of them anyway. Yeah, so as you can see, it will need grease on there anyway. So I'll clean it all up later on. And I'm gonna have another video for you anyway when I'm restoring the caliper. I'm gonna be painting it as well. And the carrier, I'm gonna show you how to paint two different ways as well. So if you're interested, don't forget to subscribe for that. So yeah, looking at the pads, let's get them out of there. They're nice and free actually, that's good. Usually they are quite seized up in there. So let's get them out of there. Have a look, they got cut in there to collect dust. On the service, I recommend cleaning that off with a screwdriver, make sure that it's not like this. So I'll clean that off later. When you're doing the pads, um, you usually got the pad that goes on the inside and the pad that goes on the outside. The inside ones usually got a pad wear indicator. This one hasn't because it's blueprint. But usually I use Paget and they will have a brake pad wear indicator, a little metal bit. Obviously it's not on here. So yeah, they don't look too bad at all. So it's good. Plenty of life left on them. And the other thing while we're here is the shims that you got here. You definitely need to have them on there. They're going to be coming off to clean them up. So like I said, this is actually not looking too bad at all. No rust on them. Same with the bottom one. Sometimes you get the new ones when you buy the pads depending what make you're buying it from. But yeah, they're looking good. So this is the areas that we recommend cleaning with the file or wire brush or whatever. Just make sure there's no corrosion or an even build up on there. So I'm gonna clean them up later. And obviously, if you're doing pads, this is all you need to know. Apart from obviously pushing the caliper in, you, if you're replacing the pads, you will need to push it in a bit more using water pump pliers or just a screwdriver, like I said, but push it even in a bit more. So next stage is if we're working on the discs, you have to remove the carrier with both of them 17 mil bolts on there. Right, so now let's remove our carrier by removing two of them 17 mil bolts. So I'm gonna put the gun to the test again on one of them. Let's try it on there. There you go, lovely, it came undone straight away. It's brilliant. And just to show you obviously a different way of doing this, I got the breaker bar there or just a big half inch uh, ratchet should do this. On the top one, got a bit of an angle there as well. So let's get that on there. There you go. That's coming undone now. It is off now. And the carrier is off as well. So once the carrier is off, you're ready to remove the discs. Obviously, it will depend if you're replacing the discs so or if you're just cleaning them up. But in my case, I'm not gonna obviously replace them because they're still in good working order. No issues with them at all. But they might be seized up on there. They haven't been greased up before. I mean, these ones are not coming off straight away. You can give them a smack with your hand if they're not coming off. Um, obviously, if you're replacing the discs, uh, you can give them a smack with the hammer. What I would recommend is putting a wheel nut on there just so they don't go flying away and hurting you or damaging something else. So in my case, I'm gonna be reusing them. I'm gonna use the rubber hammer. I'm gonna smack it at the back there. There you go, that's off. So that's enough to remove your discs. So you're just gonna slide them off. Don't forget to clean them up with the brake cleaner. Even the new ones, if you're fitting them on, make sure you clean them up with the brake cleaner, but yeah. That looks perfect. What I'm gonna do is just clean this up a little bit with sandpaper and put a bit of grease on there before fitting the disc back on there. So like I said, get a bit of sandpaper or wire brush and just clean all around there. All 
There you go, that should do it. It feels nice and even on there now. Let's get a bit of copper grease. Get that on there. They'll make sure that the disc will come out next time without any problems. At this stage, you're ready to obviously either fit your new discs. Obviously, before fitting new discs, make sure you check them to the old disc. Make sure they're the same size, uh, so you got the right bit before you do everything and realize that it's wrong. Let's just get it on there. Right. So on the carrier, like I mentioned before, you need to clean uh, the bits where the clip's going to sit on, and obviously where the pad's going to be sitting. So both sides got them. So you need to make sure it's nice and even on there, no corrosion, no buildup of anything. To clean them, you can use three different things. In my experience, you got a file that you can use by sliding it. It's actually the best tool probably to use if you haven't got airline. Uh, so you just slide it on there and clean it all up. Nice and easy, make sure it's nice and even on all of them. You can use sandpaper. Obviously the same thing, just get it in there, clean it up, nice and even. Just a little bit more complicated. And you got the wire brush, which is another brilliant tool, but it's a lot harder to get rid of a rust buildup with the wire brush. The file is probably your best option. Once you clean the carrier, don't forget, if you're reusing the clips, uh, clean them off as well. So nice and clean on there, both of them. And obviously the same goes to the pads, to the contact points that you got there, clean them with the wire brush, uh, sandpaper, make sure it's nice and clean there because they do create a bit of corrosion on there as well. And in the end, just put copper grease on the contact points that I'm going to show you later anyway. And like I said, don't forget with a screwdriver to clean the channel there as well. Right, so the discs are on there. Now we can put the carriers after obviously cleaning everything, we can put the carriers back on there. You can't get it wrong guys, you just have to align it with the hole and start them up by hand. Make sure they haven't got a lot of corrosion on the thread. If they have, just clean them up with the wire brush and just start them up by hand, like I said, and do them up. Um, all the torque settings, it is important to torque them up properly. Like I said, guys, you're working on the brakes. This is safety thing. This is one of the most important things that you're probably gonna be doing. So make sure you torque everything up to the specific torque settings. Make sure you use the right tools as well. So that's what we're going to do here. And like I said, you will find the torque settings in the description below. So please double check that. Right, so here I got my torque wrench. Let's get it on there. Click, click. That's all done up. Same at the bottom, that's all done up. Double check that. And at this stage, uh, you're ready to put our metal clips back in. Like I said, if you get new ones, that's even better. Make sure they're in there properly. The outer bits will lock them in in place. There you go, they set it in properly in there. Same with the top one. Make sure the disc is on properly as well. Like I said, if you need to put a wheel nut on there to hold it on straight. There you go, that's in there properly, nice and even as you can see. All right, so here we got the pads. I've cleaned them up and put a bit of copper grease as you can see on the bits that are gonna be moving. So there's a mark from my caliper. All we have to do is slide them in there. As you can see, I've cleaned the inner bits as well. They're nice and clean, all the dust is out. So obviously your new pads will be a lot better anyway. So I fit them on there. As you can see, slide it in properly. So that's good. And the same on the inside. Make sure it locates in properly. Both of them are in. Align the disc and it's all good, they're nice and free. The other bit that I would do is Put a bit of copper grease where you're gonna join the caliper just to avoid any noises. I mean, it's not very important, but I usually put a bit of copper grease also around where the cylinder is gonna be touching the pad, so that's all good. Right, now guys, just to let you know, obviously I'm gonna be getting a new kit. For now, I'm just gonna finish the video as what you would have to do uh, to finish the job. Uh, if there's no issue with your rubber uh, seal like I got here, unfortunately, but what you would have to do is uh, put some grease, and this is universal grease, don't put the copper grease because obviously it's not that good for the rubber, but just put uh, normal universal grease or just a brake grease on them and so it slides in there better and protects it from the corrosion as well. So obviously you would put it with the new seal in there, or with the seal that's not bloody knackered like this one, 
make sure it's nice and free. As you can see, it is moving, not too bad actually, but it will go wrong because obviously it has got a cut in there. Same on this one, get it off of there. I will clean all the rust off, which is what I'm gonna do now. And as you can see, this one's quite dirty. So clean all that off and put some grease on there and slide it back in there. So like I said, I'm not gonna do it because obviously I will have to restore this and there will be another episode of me restoring this, painting everything, which I think is gonna be exciting. Also don't forget in comments below to mention what color you think I should paint my calipers and the carriers, so please let me know. Right, now at this stage, where's the caliper? Like I said, you have to push the piston back in and make sure you feel how it goes back in if it's not too tough. Uh, so I usually use water pump grips, it makes it easier. Or like I said, while they're on here, you can push it with the screwdriver all the way in. So let's use the water pump grips. And like I said, make sure you check in the seal first before you push it in that there's no cuts in the seal. If not, you can either Obviously, we'll have to get a new caliper or you can get a replacement kit. That is something that I'm going to show you in the future videos as well, how to restore your caliper. So get it on there, nice and even, and push it in. And as you can see, that is going back in. So it's nice and even now with the, obviously, outer bit. That's brilliant. In case you fit in new pads, you definitely need to do this and push it back in. And obviously, recheck your brake fluid level at the top there. At this stage, we are done. I can take the banjo off of there. Get rid of that. And slide the caliper back on there. Get our bolts. Like I said, I still have to reuse the original one here, the 14 mil. Start it up by hand. And at the bottom, I will have to reuse the, obviously the wrong bolt for now, until I get my new kit. Unfortunately, it will have to do. So we're gonna do them up, and like I said, the torque settings are gonna be in the description below for them as well. Make sure you do them up properly. And the other thing while we're here, make sure your brake hose is this way, because sometimes you can twist your caliper too many times, and it will create a stress on the hose. They're gonna be bent, obviously stretched too much, or whatever, and that will cause a problem with your brake system, and it will also fail on MOT. So make sure your brake hose is nice and even, nice and straight. So, uh, nice and straight on there. Right, so now I'm just going to do it all up. Like I said, the settings will be in the description below. I'm going to do it up like this for now. And don't forget to use the brake cleaner to clean the disc off in case you got any grease on there. Right, so here we are. This side is all done now. Make sure you've done everything up. Make sure you're being careful. Nice and leaking. Everything's nice and clean as well. Do you feel everything the right way around? Don't forget to double check the brake fluid level after you've done the job. And also, very important, well, putting the wall back on before you drive will be handy as well. Torque it up. The torque settings for the wall nuts will be in the description below. And the other important thing, guys, is before you go anywhere, start the car up, pump the brakes. You'll feel that first couple of pumps ain't gonna do it a lot. There's not gonna be any, they're gonna feel very spongy. The reason for that is because they will push the caliper back in. Uh, so now the brake fluid will need to return there and push it out so the pads are touching the discs and that is very important. Don't just start driving away without using your brakes because you need to make sure that's sorted as well. Uh, the other thing, if you replace this and pads or just pads or whatever, uh, you need to be careful when you start driving. Use your brakes first for quite a while because there's a process like bedding in. Uh, so the pads going to bed in with the discs and it will improve the brakes after, I don't know, 10 miles of driving and using your brakes, you'll see that the brake performance will improve. So that's the other thing to keep your eye on. So don't just go crazy straight away. So yeah, like I said, make sure you're very safe doing this job because this is very important working on the brakes, guys. And I'm trying to do my best, obviously, to give you as much info as I can. Sorry if the video was too long, but yeah, I think I covered pretty much everything. Obviously, got the other side to do now. And I'm sure the next episode will be either on restoring the caliper painting it and replacing all those bits and I'll show you how to do all of that or doing the rear brakes as well which we're going to have a very similar episode in there because it's a bit of a different system and you also got shoes there as well that you need to look at handbrake adjustment which is very handy to know as well but yeah I hope I covered everything I know it's a lot of info but like I said I'm trying to help you out and hopefully you appreciate it and if you do do comment below subscribe to my channel and like my video, you can also share it with your friends because the brake systems are similar on most of the cars anyway, so it will be handy for them to know. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Stay careful and I'll see you soon.
Bye.